In this video, I will animate the equations of motion for the elastic pendulum that I derived in a previous video. Here are the equations from that video, and we're talking about equations 7 and 8. So the starting point will be the code that I wrote for the case of the spherical pendulum, and we're going to refactor that code to make it appropriate for the problem at hand. And if you take a look at animating the spherical pendulum, this video of mine, you scroll down to the link that says GitHub. And if you take the code for the spherical pendulum, there are two of them. If you take these two files, SPEN and spherical pendulum, and you download them, save them to a folder, that's where I am here. I'm going to change it from SPEN to EPEN. And elastic pendulum. All right, so let's open this file. And I remind you that the only thing we need to change here are the functions here, the equations in this definition of the function g. So that's easy enough. Let's delete these. I remind you that instead of theta dot and phi dot, we've got uh, x dot and theta dot. So this will be x dot. This will be theta dot, uh, x and theta. And that is y0, y1, y2, and y3. Then what I need is to put in these equations. In fact, let me put the equations up here on the right-hand side of the screen, and then it's easy to copy. So we've got x double dot is equal to L0 plus x times theta dot squared. Uh, theta dot squared minus k divided by m times x. That's easy. Plus g cosine of theta. All right. Second equation. Theta, theta double dot is equal to 2.0 divided by L0 plus x times x dot times theta dot minus g divided by L0 plus x times sine of theta. There you have it, the equations of motion, and then these, of course, become x double dot, whoops, x double dot, theta double dot, x dot, theta dot. And that's it. Okay, and then going down the list, the variables, we need to change the L to an L0. And I think we need to put in a K here, which we don't have. Just arbitrarily make it 100. And then I think that's pretty much it. Oh, this would be X and theta. Um, X, theta. Oh, and let's change the initial conditions. We make these all zero and that one. So actually, this should just behave like a simple harmonic oscillator. Because all I'm doing is I'm setting the initial x displacement to 1 and everything else is 0. So this is really just a mass on the spring. And let's have a look when we run this. X D not for, oh, I left out my underscore here. Let's try it again. There you go. That looks reasonable to me. Well, what happens if we set theta in motion? Uh, in fact, let's make x equal to 0 and set theta in motion. Now, because of the coupling, x should eventually be non-zero as a result of this. In other words, as the pendulum is swaying, so it should start stretching. And there you kind of see it. The orange is theta and the blue is x. So this looks good. So all we need to do is take these equations now and we can plug it into the other piece of code. I'm just going to copy this routine for g. And I'm going to take the second file. This is the elastic pendulum.py. And let's put it in here. And what I'm going to do is copy and paste the G we just redefined into here. So we need to modify both. The update is now getting past X and theta. Those are the two variables. Uh, we do not need the Z component anymore. 
get rid of it there and there. Uh, we can get rid of the cosine of phi. And then this, instead of it being L, is actually L0 plus X. And again, down I give this a different name. We should call this like X coordinate, just because it's different from this X. And we'll call this Y coordinate. Okay, and then as far as the render routine goes, we no longer have a Z dependency. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of the Z scale. Over here for the Z scale, let's just call this a fixed five. And the same thing here, fixed five. And instead of multiplying Z scale, we'll multiply by 10 here. Then let's have a look. This L must become an L0. Let's just tweak this a little bit, make this 3.5. We need to add a K. That's 100. And I believe we're done. The only thing we need to do is change our initial conditions. I'm going to just set a displacement in the X director. It looks like it's bobbing up and down. I think that's pretty good. All right, we're good. Let's uh, give it another initial condition. Um, so instead of making this, let's make this 2. We'll just give it an initial angle. Interesting. So I think what we're going to do now for the win is we're going to actually draw a spring in place of the rod. And for this, we're going to go back to a previous video for the two degree of freedom system that I animated. This is it here, part three. And if you go to the GitHub repository, there's something here called spring.py. We want to download that and drop that into our directory. And then what we're going to do is in the two degree of freedom system, there is a spring class that we're going to borrow. This is the class here. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it straight into my code. There it is. And here I've got it from spring import spring. Now all I have to do is drop that in my folder. Okay, and then all we do need to do is instantiate the spring. I'm just going to borrow the init. And let's just go down to the bottom here before our true loop. We'll just say that s equals spring. All right, and for the color, we'll say black. The start nodes and the end nodes don't really matter right now because I'm going to update that before I draw it. So I'm just going to put it at zero, zero for now. The nodes, and by the way, if you want to learn more about this class, we developed it in that previous video where I borrowed this from. There's a lot more explanation for this there. And 90 and 90. So I'm going to instantiate the spring. And then what I'm going to do is up in... I think in the render routine is the place to do this. So instead of drawing this line here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to update our spring with where we're going to draw it from, from the offset to just x, y. Well, I can just put point. That's even neater. And then we just want to render it. And that should be it. Let's run it. You can turn the tracing on and off. This is something we coded before. Uh, we can clear it, the C key. And there you have it. That's all I'm going to say about this video. Hope you found something useful in it. If you did, please go ahead and hit the like button so others can get to watch it too. If you have any questions or concerns, I'd like to hear from you in the comments section below. 
Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified of new videos and updates. Thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.